There are a great many men who have influenced what we wear throughout the decades, these style icons. Steve McQueen, Alain Delon, Cary Grant. But those men are mere pawns in the chess game of influence, merely made men, wise guys, capore gime, who owe their due to their patriarch and Don, the godfather of style, Bo Brummel. To say that Bo Brummel influenced men's fashion is a complete understatement. I mean, the suit wouldn't have the association that it has today without him or may not have even evolved into what it is at all. He is the ultimate influencer that parallels a lot of what we see in influencers today, aside from the fact that this guy actually had influence. So who is Bo Brummel? What did he do? And like we ask of all cell icons here, did his style that influenced Western fashion as we know it today actually reflect his personality? Well, let's find out. George Brian Brummel was born in London on the 7th of June, 1778 to middle-class parents, Jane and William Brummel. His father, William, was a private secretary to the Prime Minister, Lord North, and his father before him, also William, was a valet turned confectioner. Mmm, sounds good. Lord Hawkesbury actually stayed at William Sr.'s home in Bury Street. It was known for its high-class brothels. And because of that, William Jr. was handed a clerical position at Her Majesty's Treasury. See? It is all about who you know. You gotta kiss the right ass. But despite William's success, he wanted more for his sons, William, yes, another William, and George. He wanted them to become gentlemen. So, George's father sent him and his brother to Eton, just as the Royal House of England did. Eton. Eton? 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 Nah. Where he began to show his own sartorial style already, as he became known for his groomed hair and personal flair, adding a golden buckle to his cravat. Then he went to Oxford, and then Oriel College, where after some rivalry with management, left after only attending for a year to join the 10th Royal Hussars as a coronet in 1794. A year later, Daddy William passes, pfft, left him a third of his 65,000 pound inheritance, so around 20,000 pounds, which if we're calculating for inflation is over two and a half million pounds today, which is over three and a half million US dollars. I thought they said he was middle class. Wow, three and a half million. That's a nice chunk of beef, but apparently not big enough to pay for being in the 10th Royal Hussars, which had the most elaborate and expensive uniforms in the whole British military. And because the 10th Royal Hussars were the Prince of Wales zone, he quickly climbed the ranks because of his charm, his fashion sense, and his sarcastic wit, which really fascinated the Prince of Wales, George IV, who quickly became his fanboy and friend. Needless to say, people were jealous because again, it's who you know. The dude didn't even do anything special in the military and a lot of dudes were jealous because they're like, he commands us when we commanded him not even three years ago. It was pretty crazy how fast he climbed. But the life of a military man was not the life for Brummel. So he stated to the prince, why the fact is, your royal highness, I have heard that we are ordered to Manchester. Now you must be aware how disagreeable this would be to me. I really could not go think, Your Royal Highness. Manchester. Besides, and here was an instance of his tact. You would not be there. I have, therefore, with Your Royal Highness's permission, determined to sell out. Oh, by all means, brother, said the Prince. Do as you please. Do as you please. And accordingly, he resigned with the most perfect indifference and before he was of age, his troop in the 10th, at that time, the most dashing regiment in the army. Our boy Bo, as he's now nicknamed, he's in London. He's an authority on style and a friend of the prince. And this is where the juice really starts to squeeze out of that big old pomegranate. <laughs> pomegranate? You don't squeeze fruit out of a pomegranate. An orange or a lemon or a fruit, whatever. Throughout history, it's mainly the royalty that influenced the whims of fashion. And though Prince George IV no doubt had a part to play in it, it was mainly through the influence of his friend, Beau Brummel. 
He became one of the largest contributors in what would be coined in 1930 by John Flugel as the Great Male Renunciation. Now we gotta remember, back in Brummel's days, the fashion of the day was this. Yep, the powdered wig era. Probably the most ridiculous era in human history. This was mainly the style of the French court, which influenced much of Western fashion. It consisted of powdered wigs, super colorful and flamboyant silks and brocades, breeches with stockings, and perfume to cover their stanky pits. These clownish fops were in style from around the mid to late 17th century all the way to the very beginning of the 19th. And I know a lot of guys who like the feminine style and the advocates for super skinny jeans. Ugh. Cite these guys as proof that the concepts of what looks masculine is 100% fluid and changes over time. But guess who else thought this looked unmanly? Bo did. And apparently every other dude because once he took that wig off of Prince George, everyone else yeeted their wigs and breeches too. It's the perfect example of why is this even a thing? See the man. By God, you're a genius. Yeah. So what did Bo actually change? So he didn't really invent anything on his own, but mainly what he did is he took influences from different countries and social classes and actually put them together, mixed them up and made them cool. Aside from ditching the wig and makeup, he also ditched breeches in favor of pantaloons or trousers, which he wore with boots. A real notable change was that of color. Instead of really bold, crazy colors, he really toned it down. And his double-breasted tailcoat, something that evolved originally from military and hunting origin, was usually a dark navy or black, and he wore that with buckskin trousers. Both things being, again, of country and military origin. And that's still something that we see in traditional British tailoring today. This he wore with a linen shirt and a meticulously perfected cravat. And even though he appeared effortless in his clothing, he claimed it took him up to five friggin' hours to actually get fully dressed and prepared for the day. I mean, this is pretty much the extreme definition of sprezzatura, this kind of really calculated nonchalance, right? But he took it to a friggin' extreme. It's such a dichotomy. This shirt is creased. Damn this shirt. I mean, the guy would actually adjust his cravat for hours. Just the friggin' cravat. He was obsessed with it. But this was, in Brummel's view, not just essential for being a dandy, but a gentleman. Hey, I didn't say I agree. Oh, boy. Now, something he also changed and encouraged was bathing daily instead of covering it up with perfume. I can at least thank him for that. His friends, fans, and even the prince would actually come into his room and watch him get dressed to see how it was done. Sublime. Actually, it's a lot like influencers today. We're here to watch the bow dress. For Brummel, elegance came from subtlety, which is the British ethos of tailoring. Funny enough though, people did actually turn around and notice him purely because of the way he looked. But hey, you know what? If you look visually different, people are gonna notice you, even if you're the only normal looking one in a circus full of clowns, just saying. But what was his influence behind this and why did he even bother to change these things? Well, you gotta remember, not long before the French Revolution started and that foppish style with the powdered wigs and the makeup and all that and the fancy colors, in France, that was associated with the old regime. And if you remember, the Jacobins, those bastards, would chop your head off if you looked like one of those guys. So, yeah, that influence wasn't very popular. And since pantaloons were worn by the working class, that became more prominent and fashionable because they couldn't afford breeches. Breeches were for the rich. So foppish style was associated with the court, and the court was not very popular at that time, at least in France. But you know what? Seems like Bo had a lot of French influence. Neoclassical idealisms predominated, so that took form in clothing with a more natural shape to more show the beautiful shape of the body, a very Hellenistic idea. And also in muted colors because of the false perception that ancient Greece and ancient Rome were also very muted in colors with all the white marble and all that when it was actually false. It was the complete opposite. It was very colorful. 
Take an L, humanist. And just as popular as his clothing and fashion sense was his sarcastic and witty remarks, which were actually dubbed Brummelisms. But a lot of these actually worked against him because he came across as kind of a dick. I mean, he called the prince fat when he didn't greet him at a party. Who's your fat friend, Mela? <laughs> He was the archetypal dandy, and dandies at the time were criticized for being uh, total narcissists, like influencers. He gambled all the time to pay for his extravagant lifestyle and clothing that he got into insane debt doing it. I've got no money. So he fled England for Calais, France, the country of much of his inspiration. He came back to England when he gained favor again with the now King George and started working for him to pay off his debts. But then the king died and no one else gave a crap about him. So he uh, went into debt prison. And then our boy Brummel uh, went insane because of syphilis. And then he died in a sanitarium at 61. What an ending. Bo Brummel was a lot like influencers and celebrities today, using their charm and their fashion sense to climb the ranks of higher society, making friends in all the right places, and then influencing the rest of the world with their individuality. He pretty much invented the suit as we know it today, or more accurately, I should say, the lapel jacket with trousers because he wore the colors contrasting whereas a suit by technicality is matching fabric and color for your top and your bottom. But you get the point. But his lifestyle and his priorities, like many celebrities and influencers, were in all the wrong places. His ego, narcissism, and debauchery getting the best of him in the end because hey, you reap what you sow. The fact that he took so much time out of the day purely for appearance showed this. And you know, if you take that much time in your day looking in the mirror and polishing yourself on the outside, you don't have that much time to polish and work on yourself on the inside. All inspirational, you can quote that. His individual style eventually became a monotonous uniform, but that's actually a story for another day. But what do you think of Bo Brummel? Does his style and philosophy match his personality? And do you see these same patterns and connotations with influencers today? I wanna know in the comments below what you think. And with that being said, I'll see you all very soon. Adio. I'm waiting for you, Tasia. Be strong, do the right thing. Why do you always choose a carpet at Barfon? You good? Okay, where were we?